Chris had finally made it onto the ship. The mind-numbing mountain of paperwork he had to fill out before boarding now long behind him. After a brisk and slightly confusing walk through the ship's corridors, he finally found the way to his shared room. The door sliding open, he stepped into the room, dropping his luggage on the floor with a heavy thud as he all but leapt into his bed, burying his face deep into a pillow as he let out a relieved sigh. Letting a few moments pass so he could savour the moment, Chris sat back up, pulling his luggage onto his bed. But as he was beginning to unpack, he was interrupted by the sounds of the doors opening behind him. As he turned around to face the door, he and what seemed to be a large rhino made eye contact. Hi. A series of grunts and snorts replied back to Chris, the rhino tilting his head when he saw the confused look on his face. Tapping a small box in his neck a few times, the rhino cleared his throat and tried again. Hello, human. Who may you be? Ah, my name's Chris, you? Curlin. I beg your pardon? Curlin. The two looked at each other in an uneasy silence before the rhino broke into a fit of laughter. After a minute of boisterous laughing, Kura managed to maintain his composure as he wiped a single tear from his eye. My apologies. Some say my sense of humor needs work. And don't worry about the name. You can just call me Curl. It's what everyone else does. Chris sighed in relief at Cal's words. Had me for a moment. Well, it's nice to meet you, Cal. You caught me in the middle of unpacking. Unpacking? Oh, you must be one of our new hires. Yeah, that's me. I'm surprised I got hired so quickly, I won't lie. Of course they'd hire you. You seem like a fine security officer. What? I'm here as a chef. Surely you jest. You're a human, after all. Cal walked forwards and grabbed a large glove on top of one of Chris's duffel bags. You even brought one of your warrior's gauntlets. That's not exactly a gauntlet. It's a baseball glove, one my dad used to own. Kel's brow creased in concentration as he attempted to pronounce what Chris said. Base ball. This is the name of one of your warrior clans, yes? Chris's palm met his face. Definitely not. It's one of our sports. We use that to catch balls. Or else we might end up getting hurt if we don't. Hmm. Giving the glove one last look, he placed it back down as he picked up a small vial. And this? That's just some hot sauce from my planet. I didn't expect to find any good sauces hot enough out here anytime soon. Kel stared at the back of the bottle intently before throwing it back to Chris haphazardly. This contains capsaicin. This hot sauce of yours is a chemical weapon. No, 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 no. It's just a food additive. My species uses it to give our food some extra spice. But I guess that explains all the paperwork I had to fill out, Chris explained. You ingest this? Even the tiniest amount of that is enough to send most of us on this ship to the bed bay. And you've got a whole bottle of it. So, I shouldn't bring this to the mess hall? Just don't pull it out in front of the others and you'll probably be fine, he said, sighing. Probably. Right. Gotcha. Kel squeezed himself past Chris to get to his locker, opening it and grabbing a small cylinder from it. Well then, chef. I'll be getting out of your way since I only dropped by to grab an info tube. If you need me for any reason, I'll be in section 4B, but in any case, I'm your new roommate as well. Ah, then I guess I'll see you soon. A pleasure meeting you. You as well, human. Take care. Kel said as he walked out of the room, the door sliding shut behind him. Well, that was interesting, to say the least. Wonder what food they've got here. Chris couldn't even finish his thought before Kel barged through the door again, seeming a bit out of breath. Human Chris, I couldn't leave without asking, so permit a question for me, would you? Uh, no problem. Shoot. What's in the hard case? He said with a pointed claw. Seeing what Kel was pointing to, Chris turned and clipped the latches of the case open as he swung the lid up, revealing a rifle protected by foam. The ha, slug thrower! I knew you were lying to me when you said you were a chef. Can't fool me twice. I mean, I guess it's a slug thrower in a way, but it's just my old airsoft rifle. Most of us use it for recreation and it shoots small plastic pellets, so it shouldn't be lethal. At least I hope so. Airsoft! So it's not your service weapon? Um, no it isn't, he said, with a shake of his head. Ha! Huh. How hard does it hit? In general, airsoft guns shoot anywhere from 0.5 to 2.5 joules normally. Depending on how heavy your pellet is, then mine's on the higher end of that. 2.5 joules? You could injure or even worse kill more than a few of us on board with that. Girl said in shock, his translator finally catching up to Chris. Wait, how in the seven hells did you manage to get that on board if you're seriously not a security officer? I mean, I showed the people at the port my paperwork for the rifle and they just looked me up and down and let me through. I guess they thought I was security too, he said, embarrassed. Kel gave Chris a calculating look before shaking his head disapprovingly. 
I should hide this, shouldn't I? Yes. Yes, you should. <laughs>